Okay. Yeah, right. And this is where we were from yesterday. Okay, we left off right here. Now, um, we want the theoretical probability for each. All right, so again, everybody's on question number 20. All right, now I've got a lot to talk to you about, so here we go. Um, so for question number 20, what's the probability of a number greater than one? Five out of six. And if you don't know that, you can tell me. Five out of six. Because how many numbers are greater than one on the dot? You see what I'm saying? Five, right? Now, what's the probability of getting a number less than one? Josh, tell me. Zero. Yes, just put zero down. You don't have to put zero over six, it's just zero. Thank you, Josh. All right, Jackson, what's the probability of getting a number less than seven? Yes, I like that. Six out of six, right? Which is just one. All right, I'm totally fine with that. Is everybody good? What? Um, well, I know it's six over six, but like. You can just say one. You don't have to write six over six. Okay, because you know it's going to happen. It's certain going to happen. Allie, number 23, what's the probably getting a number divisible by four? Um, one. Right, good. One out of how many, though? Yes. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, Brennan, you're up. What's probably getting a three or greater? Three or greater. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Well, we're just throwing a dice. I'm not even sure what we are. I'm not sure what we're okay, well, Brennan, this is why you 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 have to talk to me and just say, hey, where are we at? Sorry. You with me? I want to help you. Okay. We're on the worksheet that we did yesterday. Question number 24. You with me? And if you're still stuck, just look up here on the board where it says you're on 24. What's the problem getting a number, a three or greater when you throw the dice? You're smart. You're going to figure this out. You want a three or greater. How many three or greaters are there on a dice? Tell me the numbers that are greater than greater. Tell me the numbers that are three or greater on a dice. Mm, three. Right. What else? Five. What else? What else? Seven. Three or greater. Here, look. The question says three or greater. Three, four, five, six. Does that make sense now or not? So what's the answer? Well, well, okay, okay, listen, listen. Let me get you on up to speed. There are four choices, right, that are three or greater. You just said that. Do you agree or not? You're not even talking to me. Do you, you said, or do you understand there's four numbers that are three or greater on a dice? No, you don't know that? How many numbers are on a die? When you throw the dice, yes. six numbers. What are the numbers? You can either get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. How many of them are three or greater? Three or greater. Three, four, five, six. Four out of how many? How many numbers all together? Six. Yeah, were you here yesterday? Yes, that's the answer, four out of six. Which reduces to two thirds. That was painful, Brennan. Are you okay though? You understand it now? What is your, what's your, charger at are you charging how much yeah get up here and sit I, I feel like I'm I'm not doing you very good what I have no idea what you said no 
No, mm -hmm. or one that we did yesterday, theoretical probability. Okay, one we did yesterday. All right, I said we were gonna finish up what we did yesterday and then today we're gonna to do the new assignments. All right, now odds is kind of like probability. Do you remember what, did I tell you what odds was or do you know? What are the odds? No, no, no. What do odds mean? Hmm. Yeah, but probability is success over outcomes. Odds, I want everybody to put this down for odds. Odds is your success over your failure. All right, success over failure, that's odds. All right. So what are the odds of throwing a three? Let's see if you understand what I said. How many threes are on the die? How many are not threes? That's why the odds are one to five. You see what I'm saying? Right, does everybody see that? One to five. There's a difference between probability and odds. All right, the odds are one to five. The probability would be one to six. All right, Logan, tell me the odds of getting a number divisible by four. Okay. Shh. One Shh. Okay, we're kind of having a discussion with everybody. All right, that's all right. I appreciate you apologizing. One out of five. All right, now, Logan, you help me out with 27. What's the probably getting a three or what are the odds of getting a three or greater? Yes, and then you just reduce two to one. All right, all right, come on, come on, let's go back. Why is number 25 one to five? One, three, and how many are not threes? That's why it's one to five. How many are greater than three? Three or greater? Three, four, five, six, four, right? So if four are greater than two or not. That's all there is, right? And if you want to do it, you could just say the number that you want minus six, all right, or subtract it from six. What are you talking about? All right, here we go. What are the odds of getting an even number? You can tell me. Misha? How many even numbers are there on the die? How many are not even? Oh, two. Which one? Oh, no, three. Three. So one. one. So we'd say one to one. Yeah. Or I would say one to one. All right, so again, odds, make sure you write that down and highlight it. Successes over failures. Why wouldn't you just make that a, oh, because it's theoretical? Yeah. Right, you with me? Okay, so now here is something I, I, I Instead of having you draw it out, what I did was I just um, showed you, right? Here are, this is called a sample space. The reason why this is called a sample space is because of all the possible outcomes of throwing two die. Come on, look up here, look up, look up, look up. So you can get a what? One and a one, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. You get a what? Two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, and so on and so forth. Come on now, you gotta listen. Is everybody with me on this? And if I want to, I just continue all the way down. So what's the smallest number you can get on a die? One, two. Two, what's the largest? 12. 12, right? Meaning add them up, I didn't say that, you're right. All right, if you throw two dice, you can either get, the smallest you get is a two, the largest you can get is a 12. Can anybody tell me why they call it lucky seven? When you throw two die, why is it called lucky seven? Do you know? You get the best roll with the seven. That's close. It's, like right in the middle. Mm, it's called lucky seven because. No, look how many different ways we can roll a seven. Six and one, five and two, four and three, three and four, two and five, one and six. 
actually they call it lucky seven because seven is the number that will occur the what? The most, right? Seven will occur the most. What occurs the least? Twelve. Or, or two, 12 or two. Is everybody with me? Right? Now, how do I, how many combinations, how many numbers are up here? How many different? 36. Now, how do I know it was 36 without doing any work? Because, say it again. Yeah, six by six. How many outcomes are there for the first dice? No, six. How many for the second? So I'm teaching you what's called the fundamental theorem of uh, uh, the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle. You have event one, which is throwing a dice. How many outcomes is that? Throw the die again. How many outcomes is that? If you want to find the total, you always multiply the two outcomes together. So six times six is what? So there are 36 possibilities up here. All right, that took a long time for people to figure that out. All right, combinations, permutations, all of this statistic stuff is really super important. It's actually revolutionizing a lot of things. It's called game theory, all right? But again, here what I want everybody to look up now, and I want everybody to see something I'm gonna do. All right, look up. Does everybody agree there's the smallest number you can get is what? Two, then a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if I ask you what's the problem of getting a two, what would you tell me? One out of thirty-six. All right, what's the problem of getting a three? Two out of thirty-six. What's the probability of getting a four? What's a uh, what's the probability of getting a five? What's the probability of getting a six? What's the probability of getting a seven? Six out of thirty-six. What's probably getting an eight? Five out of thirty-six. What's probably getting a nine? What's probably getting ten? and then 11, and then a 12. So you see, to me, it's math is just patterns. It's just patterns, all right? So again, the probability of getting a two is one out of 36. Now notice the diagonals, please. Look at the diagonals, all right? I'm gonna draw that out for you so you can see, because this is a common problem. There's that diagonal. There's that diagonal. Then this diagonal, does everybody see what the diagonal is? Those are the sums, all right? Come on, keep looking, Just pay attention. That's why they call it lucky seven, because lucky seven occurs the most time, all right? And then it goes up by one and it goes down by one once you get to lucky number seven. All right, so I know that's kind of uh, obnoxious there, but I also think that it's pretty important for you to be able to see that. All right, does everybody see that? All right, it's really easy to remember, really easy in my opinion. All right, start with one, then it just counts all the way up to six, and then it counts down to one. Those are the probabilities. Now you can also just do what? Physically count them. I don't want you to physically count them. I want you to see the pattern, all right? Now what we're doing is, all right, I'm now gonna see if we can answer some questions. Ms. Pancholi, are you with me? Yeah. All right. So here we go. Let's start with Ethan. What's the probability getting a sum of two? Thank you for listening. I appreciate you, buddy. One out of 36. All right. Miss Appleton, what's the probability to get that the sum is odd, do you think? Um, what do you think is true? Take a stab at it. I don't feel like adding it up. 
What do you think? How many, what are the different choices? You can either be what or what? Yes, 18 out of 36, because half of them, because you can either be odd or even, right? So I'm happy with your answer, 18 out of 36, but then we would just reduce that to what? One half, good. All right, now I wanna see, um, Evan, what's the probability that you're even? If odd is half, then even is also what? You with me, Evan, today? Sorry. All right. He's here somewhere. I'm sure he's talking. Tell me about even. What's the probability of getting it even? One half, exactly. All right. Those were easy. All right. Now these are a little bit trickier now. All right. So, Maya, I want what's the probability that the sum is greater than six? How much? Wow, so she just added them up real quick. If you're greater than six, you're this many. Do you agree? So you just add six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. Do you agree with that? Right? Let me show you a cool way to add those numbers up real quick. Look, 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 look. Does everybody agree I'm just adding six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one? I didn't know it was just 21 with just looking at it. I didn't have to do, I didn't have to do any work. I just knew that was 21. How did I know it was 21? Watch. Whenever you add a sequence of number, now Josh, I'm really making you smarter now. You everybody listen. Or this is why people think but I'm good at math and I'm good at numbers. I'm pretty good, but I'm not great. But I just know some techniques to add things up quickly. That's what I'm trying to show you. So watch me. I know you're good with numbers. How did I know that was 21? Look at the first and the last. Six plus one is what? Five plus two is what? Four plus three. Whenever you add the first and the last consecutive numbers, they always add up to the same thing. So there's three sevens, 21. All right? That's just a nice way of adding things up. All right? Like if I said, what is the sum of the first 10 numbers? I can tell you 11, 55. Simple as that. All right. It's not that I just did one plus two. It's just there's a pattern to adding numbers. All right. That's what I'm trying to show you now. So she said, Maya, that was good. How much? And then, of course, you're going to reduce that for me. So what is that? 21 out of 36, which is 7 out of 12. Beautiful. All right, Josh, tell me what's the probability that you're less than 10. Now, Josh, do you agree if I'm going to do less than 10? I would have to add up all of these, correct? I would have to add up all of these numbers, right? But instead of adding all those numbers, what else could I do? What could I do with those numbers? Well, first let's add them. How many is that? Right, so if that's six, then the other ones are gonna be what? How much? Now you're thinking. Does everybody agree with me on that? See how we can do that? If there's more on one side, just count the other side, right? So he said it correctly. So it'd be 30 out of 36. And then of course, Josh, you would reduce that for me for what? What's 30 out of 36? What does that reduce to? Come on, help me. 15 out of, ah, divide by six for me. Six goes into both of those. 30 divided by six. 36 divided by six. There you go, okay. All right, Jackson. What's the probability that the sum is less than eight? Less than eight. I don't think so. Less, oh, wait a minute. No, I got how many? Anybody else get something else? If you're less than eight, if you're less than eight, you're gonna be these guys, right? 
Six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. 21 out of 36. So if we put 21 out of 36, you can look at the problem right above it and it says reduced to 712. Or right, Allie, what's probably getting 11? Yes, perfect. Two out of 36. And if we reduce that, that would be what? You're awesome, Bill. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you can do one of two ways, but I wrote it up here on my on my paper. I wrote it right here. See, these are all the numbers that I'm adding up. Right? You see that? Tell me which one you're doing, and, and, and we'll redo it for you. Which one would you? Which one? Okay. Yeah. So, what's the probability that the sum is five or greater? So, I'm looking over here. Let me show you what I'm doing. Five or greater. So, this is five greater. Do you agree? No. Right. This right here is the sum, and this is how many? You with me now? Yeah. All right. So now instead of doing adding all of these, I was telling the kids they could add these numbers. How many is that added up? So then how many are not? So it would be what would our be answer? Yes, there you go, girl. You got it now. 30 out of 36, which again is just five, six. Okay. So now I have to have the odds. Now who is paying attention? Logan, what are the odds that you get a two? How many, how many, how many different ways can you get a two? So how many? One. So if there's one success, how many failures? Yes, one out of 35. All right, that's how easy it is. Trey, let me, I'm coming around. You're going to do the next, the, ne you're almost up. So what's the sum that it's six greater than six? Greater than six. If you're greater than six, right, so you're looking at these numbers. So now add those up. What does that add up to? Right. Okay, so 21. Yes, 21 out of 15. Very good. And then reduce that for me. Yes, you're awesome. Seven over five. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I know it's tricky. That's why we're practicing a lot. All right. Riley, go up a sum less than 10. So how would I do this if, I'm, if I want a sum less than 10? What would be the quickest way? Or instead of adding all these numbers, which is one plus two plus, plus what? you just said one plus two plus three, and I said, What is that? Uh -huh. Six, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know what you're doing. We want to add all of these up. That's what I'm doing. All of these, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Or we could just add these up. What does that add up to? So then all of these would have to add up to what? How many do they all add up to? Six. 36. Yeah, so if this is six, all of these would be? Yeah. Again, Riley, it doesn't matter. Remember what I tell everybody. I'm trying to teach you, that's all. That's it. So I want, if this three, two, one, 
adds up to how much? Then all of these over here would have to add up to what? And it's okay to not know. Yeah, no, all of them add up to 36. So if this over here adds up to six, what do all of these have to add up to? How many are there all together? How many are here? So how many are over there? How are you getting that? No, no, listen to me, stop. I know you don't. That's what I'm helping you with, and I don't want you upset about it either. That's part of it. We're getting it, okay? Listen, come on, girl. Come on. Do you understand? Don't. There's nothing. Oh. Yes. How many would there be over here? If there's shush. How much is this right here add up to? All of them add up to what? So if this adds up to six, what does this add up to? Yes, and what is that? Oh, it's three. No, but it doesn't matter. No one cares. No one cares. We all do that. Even I remember doing that once a long time ago. It was so long ago, I would never remember that. But anyway, I'm trying to make you feel better. So it would be what? 30 out of, now what's in the denominator? No. Because why? We're doing odds and not probability. So there's 30 yeses and six noes. Okay. All right. What is the, the odds that it's an odd number? Ethan, you're up. What are the odds that it's even? I mean, yes. What, out of? Thank you. Wow. Which is what? One to one. All right. So even is still one to one. Okay, I'm proud of you. All right, come on now. Miss Appleton, less than eight. What's the probability that we're less than eight? Yep. Yes. 21 over what? Yes. And then we reduce that to. Yes. Okay. So what's the odds of getting an 11, Allie? You're awesome. Which reduces to? Yes. Okay, Jackson, I need the sum to be a seven or an 11. Eight out of 28, which reduces to what? Anybody else? Okay? Is everybody okay with that? Jackson, good. Thank you, buddy. All right, Maya, a sum five or greater. How many? Which reduces to? Right. Good job, Kina. And Josh, I want to know the sum is a four or a nine. You're awesome. Seven over what, though? 36 would be the probability. We're doing odds, so it would be seven over what? No, 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 seven, 36 is the total, seven are what we want. So how many are, are not what we want? Notice these two numbers always add up to what? 36. Success and failures will always add up to 36. So it's seven over what, Josh? Yes, seven over 29. Am I clear on that, Josh? Anybody else have any questions? Stop now. 
and ask me a question if you're not sure. Brennan, you're all caught up now, right? You understand me? Uh, Ms. Pancholi, you understand everything? I understand. Okay, good. All right. So now everybody, let's go. We got more work to do. All right, now I want to do the tree diagram and fundamental counting principle. Um, just because when it, there's a connection from my Apple computer to the Apple iPad to that on the board, it always just says 941. It's really strange. It also says January 9, which makes no sense. Okay. All right, tree diagrams, 10-8. All right, here's what I want you to write down. Tree, tree diagrams are used to illustrate all the outcomes in a sample space, all right? And a tree diagram is a graphical way to show all the possible outcomes in a situation or an experiment. And then the sample space is a list of all outcomes in a probability experiment. All right, and I really wanna show you something today that really is helpful. All right, and it really helped me understand numbers and patterns a lot better. And this is what I want for you. All right, we're gonna flip a coin twice. We're gonna flip a coin twice. You have to tell me all the possible outcomes. All right, when you flip a coin, it could come up what? It could come up in the first one experiment they said was what? They came up heads and heads. So they labeled it HH. It could also come up as heads, right? It could come up heads and they could come up what? Tails. All right, and you would label that what? H, T. It could also come up what? Tails and what? Tail heads. You're flipping a coin, right? It's right below on question number one. All right, so then this could be written as T, H. And the other possibility would just be what? Tails and tails. All right, we label that TT. All right. Now, believe it or not, I'm very good at listing things out because I can organize them using my, my head using a tree diagram. All right, this is what I wanna show you now. Yes, me. What? Okay, so the tree diagram. Now, what I like to do just when we start out is to say, this is event number one. And for event number one, you can either get a what? When you flip a coin, you can either get a what? Heads or a tail. Now we're gonna do event number two. And event number two is where you make the branches. You could also get a what? Head or a tail. Everybody with me on this? Now watch why I like my iPad. Everybody see this now? So that's called your tree, tree diagram for flipping two coins. All right, now let's say I ask you to flip it a third time. All right, we're making a slight mod modification. Let's say I want event number three. All right? Then, when I flip, I can get another what? Heads or tail, does anybody agree with that? Or what else could I get? Again, heads or tail. Oh, they're overlapping a little bit. And finally, I want everybody to draw it in as if we flip three coins. So how many outcomes are there if we flip three coins? So 
Somebody tell me. There are eight different outcomes. There are eight different outcomes. Now, what are the outcomes? Now, please watch how I write them so fast. H, H, H. The next one is what? Follow the branch, H, H, T, H, H, T. The next branch is going to be H, uh -oh. H, T, H. And then the last branch on this side was H, T, T. Notice guys, all right, we're just going down the branch. And then the other branch starts what? T, H, T. I'm sorry, T, H, H. Then T, H, T, 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 H, T, T, T. How many outcomes are there for flipping three coins? How many outcomes, guys? Eight. Eight. That's right. Let me tell you how this guy figured all this out. It's called the fundamental counting principle. Watch me. I want everybody to put this down. Put this right here and this right here. How many options when you flip a coin? Two. You flip it again, how many options? Flip it again, how many options? Two. Every time you flip a coin, there are two choices. You can get a head or a tail, head or tail, head or tail. Does everybody agree with that? Now watch the beauty of the fundamental counting principle. What do you do with those options always? You multiply them. That tells you how many outcomes there are. There are a total of what? Eight possible outcomes when you flip a coin. If I flip a coin four times, how many possible outcomes are there? What? You flip it four times. Tell them, Brennan. How many times if you flip a coin four times, there'll be how many? 16 possible outcomes. All right? You're multiplying them out. You're multiplying them out. This is the fundamental counting principle. This is called event one. This is event two. This is event three. There are two choices here, two choices here, two choices there. So what do I do? Multiply those options. Is everybody okay with that? You good? Come on, I'm sorry. It's not the most exciting thing. I think this is hard to teach also. All right, because you just got to pay attention. And I'm not making you do much homework. I'm making you pay attention in class. That's why I'm asking you to tell me if you have a question. All right? Now, what I want to do is, what time's the bell ring? Okay, so what I want to do right now is, let's just call it a, a day right there, and then tomorrow we'll come and finish this off. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that, guys. Again, listen carefully, please. Tomorrow, come, listen. All right, I'm not giving you much homework because there's it's listen a little bit harder. All right, so I want to do all the work with you. All right? All right, let's call it a day. What, buddy?